Well, we've been present in the country, you can trace it back uh, through one form or another, back into the early 1960s, um, very many different guises. Um, we've had a number of different activities in Ireland down through all of those years. But yeah, through it all, fundamentally, um, uh, we serve as an Irish market. Uh, when I mentioned that we've had a number of different um, activities in the country through all that time, at one time there was a lot of manufacturing done here in Ireland, and there was a software development done in Ireland, uh, nowadays, we're focusing much more on the research labs through uh, Bell Labs and the activities that Bell Labs are doing. Um, the core of it all and the heart of it all through that time um, has been uh, our local service to local customers. What I have in my hand is a modern um, active antenna element. Um, it can be composed into an array. Um, and this, believe it or not, um, is the modern equivalent of something like this. Um, there's a, a good number of years in between the two. Um, the difference is that uh, while this antenna had passive components, uh, this one has active components in it. Um, it's a technology which was initially developed uh, in the 1960s and 70s for military use. Um, the biggest problem that we had with it, of course, um, is cost. Um, what the researchers here in Ireland have done is managed to solve that cost problem. Um, and also to miniaturize it down to a point where it looks very much like a very nice Rubik's Cube uh, in silver. Um, the, the whole point behind uh, this kind of approach, and this is why I love this kind of invention, is that it can be something that stands by itself. So I can put this anywhere in the street, street level, something like that. Or I can compose them into uh, a very big array. We can compose these into an array. So then you get the same effect as a very large base station, plus you have the ability to steer a beam as well. So this won't, be, this won't have a, a beam, this will. This will be more directive, directional if you, if you will. So if you have an array of this kind of thing, then I can pick out an individual in the crowd and give them service. So this is why this is changing the game a good bit. And you couldn't do it unless you had active components in this. So that's the thing that changes it an awful lot. OK, so this is a, an anechoic chamber. And uh, the anechoic chamber was built uh, with the help of a grant from the Irish government. This one is big. Um, the nice thing about it is, as you are on the camera, the, the cameraman will obviously hear this, and so will the journalist sitting next to the cameraman, that it's quiet. It's very quiet, right? If we don't say anything, it's kind of spooky. Okay, And the reason why it needs to be quiet is that any kind of wave in here needs to be absorbed so we can actually measure what the profile is of that. In fact, anything that this guy invents, basically. So, and the way it works is a bit like a beach, that as the radio waves hit these things, the energy is absorbed by the slope. If you have something that you want to measure up here on this, on this tower, on, this white, on the white column up there, and uh, the sensor is this uh, tube sticking out here. So the only way of transferring energy between the two points, the transferring a signal, is the direct line. Because there is, no, there is no reflection, there is no echo that comes from different ways, as it would be usually if this would be, an, if this would be not absorbing. So basically this is a simulation of open space, of an infinite open space. So there's only one way of transporting energy between this device and this device, it's the direct line. And this yeah. is what we want. We want to measure the direct line. And when you have the direct line in this artificial environment, you can easily calculate how it behaves in any other environment. Which is crucial. 